Oh shit! Is this the one? Get that forty mil crit. Get that forty mil crit. Come Please, on. Please God, don't fucking run around, you motherfucker. Oh, two twenty mil crits. Two twenty mil crits. Two twenty mil crits. Was your circle clean? I got one seven mil. One seven mil. Oh, come on, you motherfucker. <gasps> we might have got it. We might have got it. Come on, motherfucker. Come on. Hurry up. Let's fucking go! No! <laughs> Fuck you, We Tech did it. Man. We fucking did it. Hey guys, if you're new, welcome to the channel. If you've seen my other videos, this one will be a little bit different than the usual because for this video, we're gonna be going over how to build and play your very own Firepower Pyromancer. And you build around the skill of Volcanic Rounds. Firepower based Pyro is pretty powerful in its own right and can be a fun, fast paced build that's versatile in most situations and easily the best Firepower build to play as a client on a poor connection. While this build isn't as fast as a Firepower Techno or slashy as an Ash Blast Overheat Pyro, it can pull its own weight in group play for carrying other players or used as a hybrid debuff and damage build. Today we're covering two of the most well-known builds. The first one is the Feed the Flames build, or Feed build, and the second is the Thermal Bomb build, or the Thermal build. The objective of the Feed build is to keep rounds up for the entire expedition, which it accomplishes through the usage of the Feed the Flames skill, and the complete skill set is Volcanic Rounds, Feed the Flames, and Ash Blast. Players will probably find it easier to play the Feed build, because consistent damage from Volcanic Rounds will be enough to kill adds and bosses, and having the Feed the Flames skill easily replenishes bullets and heals yourself if you're low on health. The moderate level of damage should be sustained throughout the expedition with this build, but it's not particularly high. The thermal build, on the other hand, aims to stack debuffs on bosses so you can easily melt them. The complete skill set is volcanic rounds, thermal bombs, and ash blasts. However, with the thermal build, damage will often spike when encountering bosses because the player usually uses volcanic rounds on bosses and uses a secondary gun to deal with adds. And without the healing from Feed the Flames, you can die pretty fast, so because of these reasons, this build is considered a glass cannon. Setting up both types of builds is pretty simple. There's some overlapping gear, weapons, and skill tree. Let's cover the weapons for both builds first. Most firepower builds run assault rifles, especially tactical assault rifles, and firepower pyros basically do the same thing. The primary weapon will be a tactical assault rifle, and this gun deals the best damage per second of any assault type gun. Their rate of fire is pretty good, and there's actually a way to increase the rate using a trick that I will discuss later. The feed build is also viable with a bolt action or standard sniper or a marksman rifle, and automatic rifles aren't recommended because they deal overall less damage than the other types. Attributes on your primary gun should always have crit damage as the main attribute. For secondary and tertiary attributes, long range, close range, and status power are all viable options, uh, depending on whether you want to focus on long or close range, or even both. The mods on your primary gun should always include Dark Sacrifice, the current best firepower boosting mod, as it'll stay active throughout the entire expedition with no kill requirements to proc. Other mod alternatives are Fortress, Killing Spree, or even Embalmer's Rage, but these don't provide as much or consistent of a damage bonus, so they aren't recommended as much as Dark Sacrifice. The secondary mod will vary depending on whether you run the Feed or the Thermal build. For the Feed build, an Add Clear mod, such as Bone Shrapnel, is generally the go-to Tier 2 mod, or you could also use an Inferno Seed, keeping Wrath of Moloch and replacing Brain Eater with Dark Sacrifice. For the thermal build, the primary gun should have either Gravedigger's Frenzy or Anomaly Enhancement for maximum single target damage. The secondary gun doesn't really matter for the feed build, but the thermal build needs one of two specific types of guns. The first is a gun with the mod Ultimate Damage Link paired with either a firepower boosting mod like Fortress or Dark Sacrifice, or a damage over time mod such as Death Chains. The second option is a tactical assault rifle with identical attributes to the primary with the exception of armor pierce as the main attribute. This gun should have an ad clear such as bone shrapnel. 
Both builds can run any pistols since they're rarely used, but for the thermal build, a player can use pistols with click combustion and moaning winds, so you can quickly clear adds while volcanic rounds isn't active. A variation of the thermal build also uses the tier 2 mod Perpetual Mobile and attempts to keep up rounds while also using the brand debuffs without changing any other aspects of the build. This variation doesn't do that well on high latency client connections though. Let's pause for a bit and talk about the mod Ultimate Damage Link to explain why it's one of the main mods on the secondary gun. It isn't really used from what I can see, but it can be really powerful when utilized correctly. As its name implies, it creates a feedback loop between the affected enemies and damage over time mods and set effects continually feed into the loop. Mods boosting firepower such as Dark Sacrifice and Sharp Eye will also boost the mod's damage, resulting in up to millions of damage per tick. As such, it can be used as a rudimentary ad clear mod. On the thermal build, since the user isn't trying to keep rounds up, this mod can be used during volcanic rounds downtime to quickly spread damage between elites and bosses or help amplify teammates' damage if playing in a group. A quick note of warning though, uh, as of this video's creation, using either Ultimate Damage Link or the Tier 2 Damage Link together with the Trickster mod Pain Transfer, or the Devastator's Martial Set bonus will frequently kick teammates out of the host's lobby or even crash the host's game, so be careful when using Damage Link alongside Time Rift Tricks or Martial Venus. Please check the most current patch notes for if a fix has been introduced. Both these builds are built with mainly epic gear with the attributes bonus firepower and cooldown reduction with the choice of long range, close range, or status power as the tertiary attribute depending on the focus of the build. Any of these can be used in the feed and thermal builds with the exception of a sniper feed build which will require as much status power as possible to keep targets ashed rather than stacking close or long range. Required mods across both builds are ashing boost. Kindling, Death Sentence, and Captain Hunter. Other mods to fill the empty slots are Stand Tall, Lava Shots, Dum Dum Bullets, Crit Stack, King Slayer, Sharp Eye, and Bolt Lust. Make sure to reserve two slots for skill mods and a flex slot for either a third skill mod, extra utility like Ash Range, or a defensive mod. For the feed build, the bullet absorption and flame grasper mods are required, with Nova as an optional mod as its increased range allows you to safely pull targets from long distances. For the thermal build, the fire frenzy and branded mods are required, with double fun as an optional mod to spread four thermal bombs among enemies. If your pyro feels too squishy, running the mod's mitigation from death or damage absorber gives pretty decent protection. Other niche mods include reforging bullets to better keep rounds up, protection from the flames for armor and resistance, or lasting fire for a longer debuff on thermal bombs. But this isn't recommended as you'll usually do more than enough damage in the default 5 second window. Both the feed build and the thermal build use an almost identical skill tree, taking nodes along the top tree with only one major difference. The feed build will take nodes from the Firestorm tree to reach the Wild Feed node, which gives Feed the Flames users slightly shorter cooldowns than the Mobile users, who take nodes from the Tempest tree to increase weapon damage but give up some cooldown reduction. Nodes in the top tree that are flexible are Curse of the Pompeii versus Conflagration. Some players like to use Curse of the Pompeii to play safer, but Conflagration is a decent node to take if you want to pump in just a little extra damage, since round skills scale against enemy resistance and ignore armor. The important nodes to take are the Assault Master node, or Sniper Master if using a rifle, and Burning Situation to increase damage every time an immobilized skill is used. Optional node mod synergizing combinations are Hot Situation with Anomaly Enhancement and Crit Stack, giving up a Marble Orchard node. Okay, so now we're done talking about the builds from a purely gear perspective, so let's go over the playstyle and some tips to keep in mind. 
As with any firepower build, Firepower Pyro has three parts to its placement, aim, positioning, and skill usage. As Pyro's crowd control skills feed the flame and push blast on relatively short cooldowns, aim and skill management will not be as big of an issue, although thermal build users will need to limit and time their volcanic rounds to make sure they have it ready for a boss encounter. Crosshair placement can also help with aim, as placing it near a spawning enemy or at a certain height level to hit crits will lead to easier shots without having to move the crosshair as much and over or under shooting. Positioning-wise, Pyro will need lines of sight with their targets to kill them, and keeping in mind that volcanic rounds passes through enemies. The best thing you can do is look for angles where you can see and engage with the most enemies. Memorizing enemy spawns on each map can help greatly with both positioning and crosshair placement. A firing trick with assault rifles is simply tapping to shoot rather than holding the keybind down, resulting in a and reduced recoil, giving you more damage per second and increased accuracy. On snipers and marksman rifles, there is a mechanic called quick scoping, which is killing an enemy as soon as you aim down sights or ADS, then immediately exiting ADS. This allows you to shoot accurately at enemies close to you while maintaining most of your movement speed. Be mindful of interacting with doorways when playing in groups. When you interact with doors to open them, your skill cooldowns will reset. Firepower Pyros have naturally short cooldowns, and you may want to let someone else on your team, such as the Firepower Techno, open the door instead. For thermal builds, playing as clients on a bad connection, spamming thermal bombs while a boss spawns might cause the player to be stuck in the animation. So it's advisable to wait until the boss has spawned to apply thermal bomb debuffs. Firepower Pyros might not be speedrunning meta or easy to get used to, but mastering one is really rewarding and teaches you just how much damage the Pyromancer is capable of with a gun. If you guys enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and let me know what you thought in the comments. Also, if people like this video enough, maybe in the future there will be a video about the more obscure Firepower Pyro builds, like ones that can do this. To everyone who made it this far, thank you for watching and I hope to see some more Firepower Pyros running around in-game soon.